Today's, today's program, however, is focusing on two guest exonerees, uh, absolutely remarkable stories. The first I'm going to call is Daryl Hunt. And I, and I have to tell you that I have, for the past year and a half, and those people who know me know this, have become extraordinarily passionate about the Innocence Project and about the issues of wrongful convictions. Two things got me really going. One was visiting the Innocence Project website, which, is a, which has a wealth of, of personal and wonderful narrative, uh, anecdotal information, as well as statistics. Uh, the other was seeing two films. One of them was The Art of Innocence, I'm sorry, was at, uh, After Innocence. But the one that really moved me was a film called The Trials of Daryl Hunt. This is one of the most incredible documentaries. You would not believe this was happening in America. You really wouldn't. Uh, this is a, a, a film that documents the 20 years of Daryl Hunt's uh, case. And I would highly recommend that any of you. In 1985, Daryl was convicted for the first degree murder of a 25-year-old woman, Deborah Sykes. Uh, who was a copy editor for the Winston-Salem, North Carolina newspaper. After serving five years, his conviction was overturned. His first trial was just riddled with legal error. He was then offered a plea bargain, plead guilty to murder, and he would be sentenced to time served. After five years, Darrell could get up, take off the handcuffs, and walk out of the courtroom. Darrell refused to admit to a crime that he had not committed and rejected the offer. He was tried again, convicted, and sentenced to uh, life in prison. He spent the next 15 years in prison before being exonerated. This is a story of a, a man who is a hero in my eyes. Let me introduce Harold Hunt. people knew 
that I was falsely accused and in prison for 19 years, and I couldn't get a job. And just imagine how many other people who were less fortunate than myself could not get a job. So the project started from that point on, and I poured all my time and energy into building the project to help other people. Um, everybody wants a second chance. Everybody deserves a second chance. And one of the things that kept me going in prison, that kept me alive, <coughs> was the understanding of forgiveness. I hold no grudge or bitterness against anyone that had anything to do with me being in prison. I don't forget it, but the one thing I understand is that in order for me to ask God to help me or to forgive me for anything, I first must be willing to forgive others for what they do to me, or else I don't have the right to go to God and ask God to help me. Or forgive me. And in that same sense, it's what we strive at the project to help to make sure that each person understands that the responsibility of self, that you have to be willing to forgive and move on. Because regardless of what happened to me, Steve, Roy, Kurt, we all had a big treat on us. And then it was lifted. And I say by the grace of God, it was lifted. And now we're free. So to carry a burden of hatred or bitterness would only put that treat back on our back. So that's why we are so forgiving. Because we really understand and we really want to give, and we really want to help others, because we know what it what it feels like to be in hell. Literally, prison is is just that bad. And when you're innocent, it's ten times worse, because you can you cannot justify being in prison, and to come out, and to be able to live, and a lot of people say, well, you're free. You should be the happiest person in the world. But nobody knows the nightmares that we still suffer from prison, the psychological effect of prison. Nobody knows that every night I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, sit on the side of the bed because I have to use the restroom, but I'm waiting on the officer to tell me that I can go use the restroom. Nobody talks about that. Nobody talks, helps us with the psychological effects of what prison has done to us. And that's why what I do at the project, we try to work and talk with each other so we can work out these problems. And we try to educate more people about what we go through as exonerees. And I'm sure Kurt, when Kurt speaks, would talk more about it. But I just wanted to give you an idea of, of some of the things. When you see Steve and you see Roy, just understand that there's a whole lot that's going on inside of us that we don't talk about, that we can't talk about. But help us. If you really, truly want to help, help us figure this out so we can make sure that this don't happen to someone else. And this is the most important part of our life. So with that, I'm going to close with um, Speaking about the project, you're gonna pass out. Yeah. We're gonna pass out some leaflets on the on the uh, there on the project for freedom of justice. But I want to thank you for inviting me to come here, and I hope I was able to say something to help you in your fight. Because I believe that everyone is here is here because they believe in innocence and they believe in doing the right thing and. 
and doing the right thing. I hope you continue to go out and fight for someone else that's in prison or on the way to prison for a crime that they did.